Les McCann, acclaimed jazz pianist and vocalist whose greatest commercial success came with the 1969 song Compared to What, from his album Swiss Movement, criticizing the Vietnam War, has died. His longtime manager, Alan Abrahams, confirmed to multiple media outlets that McCann died Friday at a hospital in Los Angeles, where he had been admitted with pneumonia. He was 88. Born in Lexington, Kentucky, McCann grew up in a musical family of four. Largely self-taught as a pianist, McCann won a singing contest during his service in the U.S. Navy, which led to an appearance on The Ed Sullivan Show. After moving to California with his own trio, he turned down an offer to join Cannonball Adderley's band so that he could dedicate himself to his own music. Harry Johnson, an actor with scores of credits spanning 40 years that ranged from the original Battlestar Galactica to Buffy the Vampire Slayer, several Dick Wolf series and the famous Harry and Louise commercials, died January 2nd of in Los Angeles after a long illness. He was 81, born on December 27, 1942, in Plainfield, NJ. He often credited as Chip Johnson in the 1970s and 80s and was among the last contract players for Universal Studios. Johnson began his screen career with the multi-part pilot episode of Battlestar Galactica in 1978 and went on to guest star on dozens of TV series, including M.A.'s H., Quincy M.E., The Incredible Hulk, Simon & Simon, The Greatest American Hero, Highway to Heaven, The A-Team, L.A. Law, Dynasty, Who's the Boss, 30-something, Melrose Place, Party of Five, Roswell, Resurrection Blah V, Judging Amy, Days of Our Lives, and Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Glynis Johns, remembered by movie audiences as Mrs. Banks from Mary Poppins and by Broadway devotees as the first person to sing Stephen Sondheim's Send in the Clowns on a national stage, died Thursday of natural causes at an assisted living home in Los Angeles. She was 100. Her death was announced by her manager and publicist, Mitch Clem. Today's a sad day for Hollywood, Clem said in a statement. She is the last of the last of old Hollywood. To see more similar videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel and also don't forget to press the bell icon. David Soule, who played Detective Kenneth Hutch Hutchinson in the hugely popular 1970s Star Sky and Hutch TV series, starred in other TV shows and films and had hits as a singer, died Thursday. He was 80. In a statement to press, Soule's wife, Helen Snell, said he died after a valiant battle for life in the loving company of family. He shared many extraordinary gifts in the world as actor, singer, storyteller, creative artist, and dear friend, said Snell. His smile, laughter, and passion for life will be remembered by the many whose lives he has touched. Soul played the role of Hutch opposite Paul Michael Glazer in the ABC series throughout its 1975-79 run. The Buddy Cop series became a generational touchstone, fondly remembered even today for the star duo's genial camaraderie, the light action antics that were a hallmark of 70s police dramas and, of course, The Car, a red 1976 Ford Gran Torino with a bold white stripe that stretched from one side of the vehicle to another. Christian Oliver, real name Christian Klepser, who starred in films including Speed Racer and Valkyrie, among others, was killed Thursday, along with his two young daughters when their small plane crashed into the sea off a Caribbean island. The owner and pilot of the plane, identified as Robert Sachs, also died in the crash. Oliver was 51. According to authorities, the single-engine plane took off Thursday afternoon from J.F. Mitchell Airport in Bakia, a tiny island and part of the Caribbean nations of St. Vincent and Grenadines, and was headed to nearby St. Lucia when it crashed. Among the dead were Oliver's daughters, Medita Klepser, 12, and Anik Klepser, 10, Brian McConaughey, who was one of the chief contributors to the groundbreaking National Lampoon magazine, a writer on Saturday Night Live and SCTV, and also an actor in seven Woody Allen films, has died, according to a statement from The American Bystander, which McConaughey founded in 1981. He was 81. A Don Canto, the Mexican-American actor who parlayed his music career in Mexico into becoming a Hollywood leading man, died Jan 8, after a private battle with appendiceal cancer. He was 42. Canto most recently starred in Fox's drama series The Cleaning Lady, playing the male lead for the first two seasons. While his health did not allow him to film when production on the upcoming season three started in December, following the end of the strikes, Canto was planning to rejoin the cast later in the season.
James Kotak, former Scorpions and Kingdom Come drummer. James Kotak died Tuesday morning in Louisville, Kentucky at 61. No cause of death has been given by his daughter, Toby. Scorpions paid tribute to Kodak in a Facebook post. Very sad news. Our dear friend and drummer for 20 years, James Kotak has passed at the age of 61, the band wrote, alongside a black and white image of Kotak. James was a wonderful human being, a great musician and loving family man. He was our brother from another mother and will be truly missed. Rock and roll forever. R.A.P. James. Kotak was the drummer for Scorpions from 1996 to 2016, the longest stint for any member in the band. To see more similar videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel and also don't forget to press the bell icon. Tisa Farrow, a former actor born, like sister Mia Farrow, to show business parents Maureen O'Sullivan and John Farrow, died unexpectedly Wednesday morning. She was 72. Her death was announced on social media by Mia Farrow, who said that Tisa apparently died in her sleep. If there is a heaven, undoubtedly my beautiful sister, Tisa, is being welcomed there, Mia wrote on Instagram and X. She was the best of us. I have never met a more generous and loving person. She loved life and never complained, ever. She was nurse for 27 years, a wonderful sister to Steffi, Prudence, and me, a devoted mother to Jason, who died in Iraq, Bridget, and little grandson Kylor the lights of her life. Peter Crombie, who was a recurring and popular character as Crazy Joe Davola on Seinfeld, died Wednesday at age 71. Details on the death were not disclosed, but apparently he had a brief illness. Crombie's unpredictable Davola appeared in five episodes in season four, which included stalking Jerry and dating Elaine at one point. The character was named for TV producer Joe Davola, who has dozens of credits, Lynn Marta, an actor who maintained a steady and prolific TV and film career for nearly 40 years, best known for roles on Love, American Style, and the 1984 film Footloose, died of cancer in Los Angeles, January 11th. She was 78, calling Marta a beautiful light. The actor's friend, Joan Sobel, wrote on Facebook, My friend, Lynn Marta, lost her good fight. A wonderfully talented actress, and a beautiful singer whose voice was of the angels, a dear heart who adored her friends both human and furry. I will miss her terribly. Bill Hayes, the actor who played the colorful Doug Williams on Days of Our Lives for more than 50 years, died at 98, according to a statement from the show. Hayes originated his day's role in 1970 and played the part on and off through 2023. The show's statement also observed that he and his wife, Susan Seaforth Hayes, remained the foundation of the Williams-Horton family spanning more than 50 years. Seaforth Hayes plays Julie Williams on the show. The duo was awarded Lifetime Achievement Awards at the Daytime Emmys in 2018. Alec Musser, best known for starring in All My Children, has died. He was 50. The soap star's fiancé, Paige Press, confirmed the news to Deadline. Press took to social media to pay tribute to Musser, posting a series of pictures on her Instagram stories. Joyce Randolph, who played Trixie Norton on the television classic The Honeymooners, died Saturday at her home in New York City, according to multiple reports. She was in hospice care at the time of her death, which was from natural causes. Randolph played the wife of sewer worker Ed Norton, played by Art Carney. The couple were the best friends and neighbors of Ralph Cramden, Jackie Gleason, and Alice Cramden, Audrey Meadows. William O'Connell, whose extensive TV and film acting credits in the 1960s and 70s included a memorably villainous role on Star Trek and a string of adversaries in the films of his frequent collaborator Clint Eastwood, died January 15th at his home in Sherman Oaks, CA. He was 94. His death was announced to deadline by a family friend. A cause was not disclosed. O'Connell scored a lengthy roster of TV episodic credits in the 1960s, becoming a busy character actor of the day. He had small roles, often nameless characters distinguished only by their job titles, flagman, cabbie, field rep, or one. In Highway Patrol, Peter Gunn, and The Twilight Zone, also popping up on Dennis the Menace, My Three Sons, The Outer Limits, Bonanza, The Munsters, Batman, and The Lucy Show, Luis Vasquez, the driving force behind post-punk darkwave project The Soft Moon, died in Los Angeles early Friday at age 44, according to the L.A. County Coroner.
A post on the Soft Moon's official social media accounts confirmed the death, but no cause was given in the statement. Vasquez's death is related to two other deaths at the Los Angeles private residence. Those two individuals were identified by the coroner as 46-year-old John Juan Mendez, a noted Los Angeles techno DJ also who recorded under the name Silent Servant, whose death was confirmed by his management, according to reports, and 43-year-old Simone Ling, who was reportedly Mendez's partner. The coroner did not confirm the cause of death for any of the individuals. Singer Marlena Shaw, best known for her much-sampled hit, California Soul, has died at 81, according to a video posted to Facebook by her daughter, Marla. No details were given. Hello, everyone. It is with a very heavy heart that, for myself and my family, I announce that our beloved mother, your beloved icon and artist, Marlena Shaw, has passed away today at 12.03, Marla said on the video. She was peaceful. We were at peace. To see more similar videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel and also don't forget to press the bell icon. David Gale, who played Shannon Doherty's fiancé on Beverly Hills 90210, and Dr. Joe Scanlon on General Hospital spinoff soap Port Charles, has died at 58, according to a post from his sister and numerous reports. Gale's sister, Katie Colmenares, posted on the death of her brother. There's barely been even a day in my life when you were not with me by my side, always my wingman, always my best friend, ready to face anything and anyone with me, Colmenares wrote via Instagram on Saturday. The bears will never be the same, but I will hold you so tight every day in my heart, you gorgeous, loving, amazing, fierce human being. Norman Jewison, who directed Best Picture Oscar winner. In the Heat of the Night and Nominee's Fiddler on the Roof, A Soldier's Story, Moonstruck and the Russians Are Coming, The Russians Are Coming, also producing the latter four, died peacefully. Saturday, January 20th, he was 97. Jewison's film career spanned more than four decades and seven Oscar nominations, three for Best Director, In the Heat of the Night, Fiddler on the Roof and Moonstruck, and the four for Best Picture. His films received a total of 46 nominations and 12 Academy Awards. In 1999, Jewison was honored with the prestigious Irving G. Thalberg Award at the Academy Awards. He also collected three Emmy Awards for his work in television. Gary Graham, an actor who appeared in dozens of TV roles but will be best remembered for his place in the Alien Nation and Star Trek universes, has died. He was 73. His death was announced by his ex-wife, actress Susan Lavelle, in a Facebook message posted shortly after 1 a.m. today. She did not provide a cause of death. Frank Farian, the German record producer and singer-songwriter who founded Millie Vanilli and the disco pop group Boney M, has died. He was 82. His family released a statement confirming he died peacefully at his home in Miami. Farian was the brains behind the pop duo Millie Vanilli, who was best known for their songs Blame It on the Rain and Girl You Know It's True. He later admitted to the lip-syncing scandal that led to the revocation of the duo's 1990 Grammy for Best New Artist. It also led to multiple lawsuits in the U.S. Melanie, the witty, gentle-voiced singer-songwriter who rose to fame with her crowd-pleasing performance at Woodstock in 1969 and had two major hit singles, Brand New Key and Lay Down, Candles in the Rain, in its aftermath, died January 23rd. She was 76. Her death was announced by her children Layla, Jordy, and Bo Jared. A cause of death was not disclosed. Margaret Riley, the agent, manager, and lighthouse management and media partner and producer on the 2019 film Bombshell, died Tuesday of ovarian cancer at her Brentwood home. She was 58. Her friends Lainey Becky and Matthew Weinberg confirmed the news to Deadline. Herbert Cowboy Coward, the sometime actor and pal of Burt Reynolds, who played one of the scary, sadistic mountain men in John Borman's Deliverance, died Wednesday in a car crash in North Carolina. He was 85. His death, along with that of his girlfriend Bertha Brooks, 78, and their pet Chihuahua and Squirrel, was announced by North Carolina State Highway Patrol officials. Jesse Jane, one of the most popular porn film actors of the early 2000s, who had some success pivoting to the mainstream, was found dead by police this morning with her boyfriend at their Oklahoma residence. She was 43. Oklahoma City's Coco 5 TV channel reports that police officers were conducting a welfare check around 11 a.m. today at a home in Moore, Oklahoma. 
Two people were found unresponsive of suspected overdoses. Rod Holcomb, an Emmy-winning ER director who also helmed Battlestar Galactica, The Six Million Dollar Man, China Beach, and dozens of other shows and was a longtime Directors Guild Negotiating Committee member, has died. He was 80. The DGA said Holcomb died Wednesday in Los Angeles after a long illness. Italian actress Sandra Milo, best known for her supporting roles in Federico Fellini's Oscar winner 812 and Golden Globe winner Juliet of the Spirits, died January 29th at 90. Born on March 11, 1933, in Tunisia to Italian parents in 1933, Milo grew up in Tuscany, Hinton Battle, a three-time Tony Award-winning actor who originated the role of Scarecrow in Broadway's The Wiz, died yesterday. He was 67. His death was confirmed by his friend, the actor and choreographer Debbie Allen. A cause was not disclosed. Chita Rivera, the beloved Broadway star of West Side Story, Chicago and Kiss of the Spider Woman, died today in New York following a brief illness. She was 91. One of America's foremost Latina artists, Rivera was a groundbreaker, riveting critics and audiences alike, with seminal performances of such soon-to-be Broadway standards as America and A Boy Like That from West Side Story and All That Jazz from Chicago. She was among the most nominated performers in Tony Award history. She earned 10 nominations, winning twice for The Rink and Kiss of the Spider Woman and receiving the 2018 Special Tony Award for Lifetime Achievement in the Theater. To see more similar videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and also don't forget to press the bell icon. Mark Gustafson, who alongside Guillermo del Toro directed 2022's Oscar-winning animated feature, Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio, died February 1st at 64 following a heart attack. Del Toro confirmed the news on social media, writing that Gustafsson was a pillar of stop-motion animation, a true artist, a compassionate, sensitive and mordantly witty man, a legend and a friend that inspired and gave hope to all around him. Gustafsson's career began in the early 1980s when he was hired as a PA at the storied Will Vinton Studios, under the veteran claymation master behind the PJs and films such as The Adventures of Mark Twain and Walter Murch's Return to Oz in 1985, on which Gustafsson collaborated. Gustafsson was the lead animator and co-wrote the story for the TV comedy special Meet the Raisins in 1988, which was spun off into the series The Californian Raisin Show a year later. He was the animation director for Wes Anderson's Fantastic Mr. Fox in 2009. Greg Finley, a prolific voiceover actor whose many credits include animated fare like Robotech and live action projects, including The X-Files and Men in Black 2, died peacefully. February 1st of heart-related causes while on vacation at a family member's home in Phoenix, Arizona. He was 76. His death was announced by his son, Guy Finley. A voiceover actor with scores of credits stretching back to the 1980s, Finley, occasionally credited under the name Guy Garrett, had by that time already begun his show business career as an on-screen actor with small roles in episodes of, among others, Kolchak. The Night Stalker, 1975, and, in 1981, Flo and The Misadventures of Sheriff Lobo, Carl Weathers, who starred as Apollo Creed in the first four Rocky films and appeared in Predator, The Mandalorian, Happy Gilmore, Action Jackson, Arrested Development, and dozens of other films and TV shows, died Thursday, his family announced he was 76. We are deeply saddened to announce the passing of Carl Weathers, his family said in a statement. He died peacefully in his sleep on Thursday, February 1, 2024. Carl was an exceptional human being who lived an extraordinary life. Through his contributions to film, television, the arts and sports, he has left an indelible mark and is recognised worldwide and across generations. He was a beloved brother, father, grandfather, partner, and friend. Don Murray, who rose to fame co-starring with Marilyn Monroe in 1956's Bus Stop and enjoyed a prolific career that stretched into the 21st century with Twin Peaks. The return in 2017 has died. He was 94. His death was announced by his son Christopher to the New York Times. No additional details were provided. Wayne Kramer, the co-founder and guitarist vocalist of the iconic Detroit punk band MC5, has died at age 75.
The news was shared on Kramer and MC5's official social media pages today, but a cause of death was not disclosed. Born Wayne Cambies on April 30, 1948, the guitarist formed the MC5 for Motor City 5 as a teenager with his friend Fred Sonic Smith. They played locally, eventually becoming the house band at the Grand Ballroom in Detroit. John Sinclair, a left-wing activist, became the band's manager, and they soon were a staple of the late 60s political movements, aligning with the White Panther Party, the anti-racist group that Sinclair co-founded. To see more similar videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and also don't forget to press the bell icon. Ian Lavender, the last remaining cast member of beloved BBC sitcom Dad's Army, has died. He was 77. An ex-statement from the official Dad's Army radio show account announced that Lavender, who played Private Frank Pike in the sitcom that ran for a decade, ending in 1977, had died on Friday. Toby Keith, a country music superstar and songwriter's Hall of Famer, died Monday after a three-year battle with stomach cancer. He was 62. His family announced his death in a post on Instagram. Toby Keith passed peacefully last night on February 5th, surrounded by his family. He fought his fight with grace and courage. Please respect the privacy of his family at this time. Born Toby Keith Koval on July 8, 1961, in Clinton. Okay, Keith amassed three dozen top ten hits on Billboard's Hot Country Songs chart from 1993 to 2011, 20 of which hit number one. Eleven of his singles went platinum and ten more went gold. He was inducted into the Songwriters Hall of Fame in 2015. Cecilia Gentili, an actress from Pose and an LGBTQ advocate, has died. She was 52. A post on Gentili's Instagram stories confirmed news of her death, with many of her friends sharing tributes to the late actress coming soon after. Pose co-star Dominique Jackson paid tribute to Gentili on Instagram, saying she was deeply saddened by her departure. Mojo Nixon, a musician, actor, and radio DJ, who became a comedy icon for such songs as Don Henley Must Die, Elvis Is Everywhere, and Stuffin' Martha's Muffin, died today at 66 of what was termed a cardiac event. His family confirmed the death to Rolling Stone. Nixon was aboard the Outlaw Country Cruise, an annual music cruise where he was a co-host and regular performer. Robert M. Young, whose 70-year career included independent and studio documentaries, narrative features, and episodes of Battlestar, Galactica died Tuesday in Los Angeles at 99. His death was confirmed in a Facebook post by his son. Two of his films have recently been added to the Library of Congress Film Registry. They include Alambrista, 1977, a film about the life of an undocumented Mexican immigrant, which won the camera door for best first film at Cannes, and The Ballad of Gregorio Cortez, 1982, one of Young's eight films with actor Edward James Olmos. Based on a true story that inspired a corrido, it tells of a man on the run after a confrontation with police. To see more similar videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel and also don't forget to press the bell icon. Henry Fambro, the last surviving original member of the great hit-making R&B vocal group The Spinners, died yesterday at his home in Northern Virginia. He was 85. His death was announced on the group's Instagram page. No cause was given, but the announcement notes that Fambro died peacefully. Randy Sparks, whose group The New Christy Minstrels was a huge part of the folk revival of the early 1960s, died February 11th at an assisted living facility in San Diego. He was 90. His son, Kevin, confirmed the death to the New York Times. Sparks was living on his 168-acre ranch in Jenny Lind, CA, until a few days before his death. Ann Whitfield, who appeared at age 15 in the 1954 Hollywood Christmas Chestnut White Christmas and went on to a prolific career in episodic TV throughout the 1950s, 60s, and 70s, died February 15th at a hospital in Yakima, Washington. She was 85. The actor, whose TV credits stretch from I Married Joan and Father Knows Best through The Six Million Dollar Man and Adam 12, suffered what her family describes as an unexpected accident during a walk in her neighborhood. Rita McKenzie, known for staging the longest-running one-woman show in theatrical history, died Feb 17 in Los Angeles, days before her 77th birthday. She succumbed to what her family described as a long-term illness, a powerhouse stage voice and theatrical personality, 
Mackenzie's 1988 off-Broadway one-woman show, Ethel Merman's Broadway, became the longest-running one-woman show in theatrical history. Tony Ganios, the actor who made his film debut in Philip Kaufman's 1979 coming-of-age comedy drama The Wanderers and played audience favorite Anthony Meat, Tuparello, in the 1980s Porky's sex comedy franchise, died Sunday following surgery at a hospital in New York. He was 64. His death was announced on social media by his fiancée, Amanda Serrano Ganios, who said that the actor fell ill last week, was hospitalized Saturday with a spinal cord infection, and passed away Sunday of heart failure. Ewan McIntosh, who played lovable loser Keith in Ricky Gervais' seminal BBC comedy, The Office, has died. He was 50. Gervais was among those paying tribute to the actor, whose passing was confirmed by his talent agency, Just Right Management. Paul D'Amato, the actor who played the gloriously vicious Tim Dr. Hook McCracken, opposite Paul Newman in Slapshot, died Monday after a long battle with progressive supranuclear palsy, a rare brain condition that is similar to Parkinson's disease. D'Amato was 76. The news was shared online by his longtime partner and fellow actor, Marina Ray. D'Amato got the role in Slapshot, in part because he could hold his own on the ice. He played college hockey at Emerson, and also for a team called the Reds in a Burlington VT league in 1975. British actress Pamela Salem, who starred in the James Bond film Never Say Never Again and TV's Doctor Who, died on Wednesday, according to Big Finish Productions. She was 80. Born in 1944 in India, she played Bond secretary Miss Moneypenny in Sean Connery's 1983 film Never Say Never Again which is considered an unofficial addition to the Bond canon because it was not produced by Eon Productions. John Savident, who played the booming-voiced Fred Elliott in British soap Coronation Street, died Wednesday. He was 86. His agent confirmed his passing in a statement to press, saying, We are sad to announce the death of the actor John Savident, who died on Wednesday, 21st February. He was a much-loved husband and father of two, and will be sorely missed by all who knew him. Stuart Organ, the longest-serving actor in iconic BBC children's show Grange Hill, has died. He was 72. Organ died earlier this week, his reps confirmed to the BBC. They said he died peacefully at home after a short illness. Linda Gravatt, a mainstay of the New York stage, a seminal figure in the Washington, D.C. theater community and a familiar presence on television through appearances in the Law & Order franchise shows The Good Wife and the 1999 Showtime series The Hoop Life died February 23rd at a hospital in New Jersey. She was 77. Her death was confirmed by the National Black Theater. A cause has not been disclosed. To see more similar videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel and also don't forget to press the bell icon. Chris Gauthier, an English-born Canadian actor whose TV credits included Once Upon a Time in Eureka, died on February 23 at age 48. His management said he died from an unspecified short illness. Jackie Lockery, the first Miss USA who segued from the pageant world to a career in film and television in the 1950s and 60s, died Friday in Los Angeles. She was 93. Her death was announced on social media pages of the Miss USA organization. It is with great sorrow that we share the news of Jackie Lockery's passing, a pioneer who made history as the first ever Miss USA in 1952 the organization wrote. Jackie Lagery will always be remembered as a trailblazer in the world of beauty pageants. Her grace, poise and intelligence captivated audiences and paved the way for future generations of women to shine on the stage. Kenneth Mitchell, who played several characters in Star Trek, Discovery, and also was known for his roles in Jericho and Captain Marvel, has died from complications of ALS, his family revealed Saturday. He was 49. With heavy hearts, we announce the passing of Kenneth Alexander Mitchell, beloved father, husband, brother, uncle, son and dear friend, his family shared on ex-Twitter. Peter Anthony, Peter, Morgan, lead singer of the Grammy-winning family reggae band Morgan Heritage, died Sunday of undisclosed causes. He was 46. A cause of death was not disclosed. His death, which Jamaican Prime Minister Andrew Holness called a colossal loss for Jamaica and reggae music, was announced on social media by Morgan's family members. The group has family roots in Jamaica, Brooklyn and Springfield, Massachusetts. Charles Deercop, best known for his roles in The Sting, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid and Policewoman, 
died Sunday at a Sherman Oaks hospital. He was 87. He reportedly suffered from a heart attack and a case of pneumonia. The Wisconsin-born character actor got his start in an uncredited role opposite Paul Newman in The Hustler. He reunited with him as Flat Nose Curry in the 1969 flick Butch Cassidy and as a bodyguard in the Best Picture Oscar-winning 1973 movie The Sting. He found steady work in TV with roles in episodes of Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea, Lost in Space, The Girl from UNCLE, Mannix Kung Fu, The FBI, The Andy Griffith Show, Star Trek, Batman, Adam-12, It Takes a Thief, Love, American Style, and Mission Impossible. Richard Lewis, one of America's most beloved and revered stand-up comics who also played a fictionalized version of himself on HBO's Curb Your Enthusiasm, died Tuesday night at his home in Los Angeles after suffering a heart attack. He was 76. His death was confirmed by his publicist, Jeff Abraham. Lewis had been living with Parkinson's disease, a diagnosis he revealed in April 2023. Veteran television actress Jean Allison, best known for roles in shows like Bonanza, Gunsmoke, and Perry Mason, has died at 94. Her family's obituary said she died February 28 in Rancho Palos Verdes, California, but no cause was given. Allison, a character actress, built a long resume in popular TV. She appeared in episodes of Charlie's Angels, The Detectives, Emergency, Hawaiian Eye, Starsky and Hutch, The Waltons, and many others. Born on Oct. 24, 1929, she grew up in Tarrytown, New York. She eventually attended Adelphi College on Long Island and later studied acting under Sanford Meisner. Paolo Taviani, the iconic Italian director who helmed numerous films with his brother Vittorio, has died. He was 92. Taviani died in a clinic in Rome after suffering from a short illness, according to media reports. His wife and two children were at his bedside, according to a NASA news agency. Rome Mayor Roberto Gualtieri made the announcement on X. To see more similar videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel and also don't forget to press the bell icon. Steve Lawrence, the singer who teamed with his wife Adi Gourmet to form one of the most popular nightclub and concert duos of their generation, died of complications from Alzheimer's disease today. He was 88. His son, the composer and performer David Lawrence, said in a press statement, My dad was an inspiration to so many people, but to me, he was just this charming, handsome, hysterically funny guy who sang a lot, sometimes alone and sometimes with his insanely talented wife. I am so lucky to have had him as a father and so proud to be his son. My hope is that his contributions to the entertainment industry will be remembered for many years to come. Malachi McCourt, the Irish-American actor, raconteur, and author, best known to TV audiences for his long-running role as Kevin the Bartender on ABC's soap, Ryan's Hope, died today in Manhattan after battling a heart condition and cancer. He was 92. Robin Bernard, who played Terry Brock on General Hospital in more than 140 episodes from 1984-90, died March 12th in San Jacinto, CA, law enforcement officials said Wednesday. She was 64. The Riverside County Sheriff's Department said Bernard was found in an open field behind a business but did not reveal a cause of death. See the report here. Detectives were investigating, but Sheriff's warrant Wendy Brito Gonzalez said, Foul play was not suspected in this death. Bernard was born on May 26, 1959, in Gladewater, Texas. She began performing at a young age, singing gospel songs with her younger sister, future longtime wing star Crystal. The elder Bernard's first screen appearance was in the 1981 film Diva, and she followed that with guest spots on such series as The Facts of Life, Simon and Simon, and Wiz Kids. To see more similar videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel and also don't forget to press the bell icon.